we are talking about extensible markup language xml so we are taking the question and answer which are generally asked in this xml the first is what is xml xml it stands for extensible markup language what kind of language it is is it uh, equivalent to or similar to your general purpose programming language or say uh, tag based language like html or XHTML. So this extensible markup language generally this is written as like this extensible. This X is capital here. So this is extensible markup language. This is a universal language you can say on web of course for data on the web. XML is a way or you can say a technique or technology which allows us to create our own markup language. We can create our own tags, so we are able to create our own markup language. XML documents are universally accepted as a standard way of uh, presenting or representing information in a platform and language independent manner. See, because of this only, because of the platform and language independency xml documents are so popular xml for information interchanging now it is almost a universal standard and xml documents can be created in any language and can be used in any language this also makes this xml so vital so important and so widespread now the next question would arise is what is the difference between your XML and HTML or XHTML say. Uh, you know they are altogether different technologies. HTML is a formatting language, formatting of your web pages. So it's, it, HTML needs your CSS to style more formally. Uh, to provide the dynamicity, it may require jQuery, JavaScript, etc., or AngularJS, and uh, various other things like you want to do some server-side scripting, you have to go to PHP or or say ASP. Now XML has no clash with HTML. They are for different purposes because HTML is for display purpose, while XML is for data representation. HTML is used to mark up text so it can be displayed to users the same way you write on a say Microsoft Word. XML is used to mark up data. This is important. We are dealing with data here so that or so it can be processed by computers in a way it is being told. HTML describes both the structure like the paragraphs, the headings and the appearances like HR, BR, font, italic, bold, etc. While XML describes only content, only content, or you can say the meaning. HTML uses a fixed, fixed, unchangeable set of tags. You cannot change HTML tags. If you say HTML5 tells you that you have a canvas, or you are going to make a canvas and you are ending it with a canvas there is no other way you can write canvas as say canvases there is no possibility but in XML you can make these canvases you can make up your own tags but we'll be talking about those questions because on on the basis of certain DTDs and the background uh, structure which has been defined for XML, the XML can be written. What are the benefits of XML? Lot of benefits are there. XML is immense. First of all, it is very simple. Information coded in XML is quite easy. First of all, to read and then to understand. Also, it is it can be easily processed by your computers. Openness, because it is a W3 standard, World Wide Web Consortium standard. 
Of course, it, will, it is and it will be endorsed by the giants, software industry market leaders. The name suggests extensible. Name itself has extensible. That means it is, it has extensibility. There are no fixed set of tags. New tags can be created as they are needed. And self-description. That means in traditional databases, you need to uh, put or you require or data records require certain schema to be set up by your DBA or a database administrator. XML documents can be stored without such definitions because they contain metadata in the forms of the tags and the attributes. And it can this contains the machine readable content information. That means we have just talked about the tags and the attributes. Apart from this, we have element structure which provide context information that can be used to interpret meaning of the content, what exactly the meaning is, and also, you know, giving up your way or new possibilities for highly efficient search engines, intelligent data mining agents, etc. Then, it separates the content from the presentation because XML tags they describe meaning. There is no presentation. But the idea of or the key issue of HTML is how, how does it look? While XML says, I know what it means, and you tell me how it should look. The look and feel of XML document can be controlled by XSL style sheets. The same way HTML has cascading style sheets. XML do have XSL style sheets, allowing the look of the document to change without touching the document content. Uh, multiple views or presentations of the same content are easily rendered. Then the universal approach is Unicode, that is it's supporting multiple or multi-language documents. And this is important for the globalization or internationalization of the applications. Then it facilitates the comparison and aggregation of data. You ought to have a tree structure of XML documents. You ought to have a root. Then you have children. So the tree structure of XML documents, it allows document to be compared and aggregated efficiently element by element. And it can or it is capable to embed multiple data types. So XML documents can, ten, can contain any possible data type, uh, say from multimedia data, image, sound, video, to the updates and ActiveX, that is the active components also. And it can embed existing data. And mapping existing data structure, like the file systems or relational database, to XML is simple. XML would support multiple data formats and can cover all existing data structure. And it provides a one server view for distributed data. That means XML documents can contain or can consist of nested elements that are distributed over multiple remote servers. So XML is currently the most sophisticated format. It's quite easy, but you know, being easy, it is sophisticated also for distribution, data distribution. The World Wide Web can be seen as one huge XML database. No tables, no schema, just XML database. Now, the ne next question arises, what is a well-formed XML document? What do we say and when do we say that our XML document is well-formed? The answer lies here. If your document, that means the XML document, is syntactically correct, then we say it is a well-formed XML document. And it should conform, it should abide by the XML's basic rules of syntax. That means every open tag need to be closed. The open tag must exactly match the closing tag. That means XML is case sensitive. All elements must be embedded within a single root element. There has to be a single root element 
and there can be multiple nesting there can be multiple elements inside it child tags must be closed before any parent tags can be and a well formed document has correct xml tags index but the elements might be invalid for the specified document type so what is a valid xml document we have just seen we know that if a document is structurally correct then it can be called as a valid valid xml document a valid document conforms to the rules that are predefined for a specific type of documents these rules can be written by the author of the xml document or it may be someone else so the rules determine the type of data that each part of a document can contain and you have to know that valid xml document is implicitly well formed but well formed may not be valid okay there are question about that also that is that will, that will be coming shortly so what is the structure of xml document this is the structure a very simple structure you start with xml declaration you start with an angular tag you say question mark then you say xml just the way you have been doing in your php question mark and then you write php in a similar fashion the browser is going to know or the parser is going to know that if something like this i see okay this may be an xml document then you ought to have a version like this and then in double quotes you provide the attribute 1.0 any other version and then encoding that is utf8 you're talking about the unicode then you have a dtd you may have a dtd you may not have a dtd but always your document should be supported by some some sort of background structure then this is written like this and don't uh, understand this to be a, a xml uh, say a comment this is doc type library public and you say my dtd library in english is or can be can be found at this path this is the path of my dtd document type definition or document type declaration then we start with a root tag this is say for example we have a root tag which is called library now i need to close this this library okay this root tag is closed then you have a shelf now this is a shelf inside this you have a book and inside this you have a title and an author so you have a book with certain title and author in the in a shelf and a library so library is is behaving or acting like your root node and then you also have certain properties which are given like shelf id is equal to fiction that will be used in various activities later on so this is the structure of xml document next is what is a processing instruction in xml see a processing instruction is the information which we would like to give to the application uh, through a through this processing instruction an application would get an idea about how to process the document so we are giving an instruction that to process instructing how to process in xml so a processing instruction can appear anywhere and any number of times in document how does the xml structure is defined xml document uh, will have a structure we have just seen which uh, has to be defined before we can actually create the documents and work with them so the structural rules can be defined using various technologies and some popular of them is dtd as we have just uh, seen in the earlier question we define the dtd document type definition or you can provide the schema so what exactly dtd is what is dtd it is document type definition which defines the legal building blocks of an xml document it defines uh, rules for a specific type of document which includes the say the name of elements how and where they can be used then the order of the elements 
the proper nesting and containment of the elements and the element attributes, and to apply a DTD, document type definition, to an XML document. You can include the DTD's element definition within the XML document itself, or you can provide a separate file for this DTD whose name you refer in your XML document. So actually, your XML is like this. And to, to define the structure of this XML, you have a DTD. So this, this structure, whichever, whichever structure you see here, this will refer to the DTD. And once parser is going to uh, see whether this is valid or not, it will refer to the DTD. So now, what is XML schema? XML schema would describe the structure of an XML instance document by defining what each element must or may contain. The similar way DTD is going to do. So XML schema is expressed in the form of separate XML file. So XML schema provides uh, your control on element and attribute data types and some data types are predefined and new ones can be created like this. This is XSD XML schema definition. The schema you have this XML namespace and this is the path you can give and then X element XSD all this XSD and then element name which can be some test and then some complex type things. So actually you are making or you are creating certain stuff on the basis of which or the schema on the basis of which your XML is going to be built. So this is how it, it will all be seen. This is the schema element. You have an element and you have simple type. You can have a complex type. First, let us talk about simple type. It may be user defined. It may be built in and in user defined, it can be atomic or non-atomic and in built in, it can be primitive and derived. While in the complex type, it can be empty, simple content and complex content. And in the complex content, we have this sequence, all or choice. Now the question arises is what are the differences between your DTDs and schemas? Differences between DTDs and schemas. So the difference uh, between schema and, and DTD is like this. First of all, the schema document is an XML document by itself. That is the structure of XML document is specified by another XML document. While in DTD, DTD follows SGML uh, syntax. And this is again a markup language. And it was previous to what we know today. Schema uh, supports variety of data types similar to the programming language. In DTD, everything is treated as text. Uh, in schema, uh, it is possible to inherit and create relationship among elements. So inheritance and relationship is there in schema. But in DTD, it is not possible without invalidating existing documents. In schema, it is possible to group elements and attributes so that they can be treated as a single logical unit. While grouping of elements and attributes is not possible in DTD. In schemas, it is possible to specify an upper limit for the number of occurrences of an element. But in DTD, on the other hand, it is not possible to specify any upper limit of an element in DTDs. Then comes the question, what is complex element and what is simple element? So let us start with the complex element. A complex element is an XML element that contains other elements or and attributes. So there are four kinds of complex elements. First is your empty elements. Element that contain only other elements. An element that contain only text. An element that contain both other elements and text. So the combination of these two. And what is a simple element? A simple element again is in XML element that can contain only text. A simple element cannot have attributes. A simple element cannot contain other elements. And a simple element cannot be empty too. And then the text, 
that can be of uh, many different types. This is possible in simple elements and they may have various restrictions that are being applied on it. What are namespaces and why are they important? Namespaces, as we have seen in our programming language, it is just an, an area or an arena where a similar category of stuff is put in, like the package in Java, like the namespaces in your C++, namespaces in your um, C Sharp. So a simple element is an XML element that can contain only text. Simple element is an XML element that can only text, but namespaces are simple and straightforward way to distinguish. So now we need to distinguish names used in XML documents, no matter from where they come from. The XML namespaces are used for our, our users to provide uniquely unique name elements and attributes in an XML instance, just the way it uh, we have seen the purpose of namespaces in various programming languages. And namespaces allow developers to qualify uniquely the element names and relationships and make these names recognizable to avoid any sort of name collisions on elements that have the same name, but they may be defined in different vocabularies. And they also allow, and namespaces, they also allow tags from multiple namespaces to be mixed, which is quite essential if data is coming from multiple sources. For example, a bookstore may define title tag to mean the title of the book, which is contained only within a book element. A directory of people, however, might you define this title again to indicate a person's position. For instance, title, president, title. So how to deal with these two titles because you know, it is not allowed. Namespace comes to the rescue. So namespace help define this distinction clearly. Uh, but you need to understand every namespace has a unique name which is a string and to maintain the uniqueness among these namespaces again we have uh, you know this IRL or UR, uh, URLs because these uh, universal resource locator, they are most preferred uh, approach. And except for no namespace schema, every XML schema uses at least two namespaces. The target namespace and the XML namespace, which is like this. And, you know, this I've taken just because uh, as it started, now this has changed. So you need to uh, really need the new one. What are the ways to use namespaces? So there are two ways to use namespaces. You can declare a default namespace or associate a prefix with the namespace. Then use the prefix in the XML to refer to the namespace. So these are two types or two ways how you can use the namespaces. So what is the relevance of element from default attribute in this schema? Element from default, uh, this attribute, it indicates whether or not locally declared elements must be qualified by the target namespace in an instance document. So element from default the attribute is the schema. They have the relevance like this. They are qualified. So each and every element of the schema must be qualified with the namespace in the instance document. And unqualified, it means only globally declared elements must be qualified with their namespaces and not the local elements. So this questions we have just taken and uh, we'll be taking few more of this in coming discussion. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.